But today, I want to turn my attention to my favorite escort. Loose in there. It just starts crunching. A weak gun then failed to loosen the bolt her starter motor, which was actually broken. The wrong thread. Oil leaking. I have to remove the flywheel. It's blowing on the clutch. This one does have a hole in the bell housing. <laughs> As I undone the last bolt, disaster. Oil started spilling out the back of the sun. Well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today you join me from the cockpit of this utter piece of junk Mark II Escort Mordor that I like to call Maud. If you've been watching my most recent videos, you would have seen that I've made quite a lot of progress on my other Mordor Mark II Escort that I like to call Heidi. But today, I want to turn my attention to my favourite Escort of the three that I'm very lucky to own, Esther, my ST170 Mark I. All right, with summer fast approaching, it's about time I addressed an issue with this thing that I mentioned at the end of last year. And it involves this sensor here, which sits just above the starter motor. This is the crank sensor, and it's basically loose in there. Now, unfortunately, the bracket that this sensor attaches to is actually bolted to the engine with a bolt that's behind the flywheel, and you can't get to it without removing the gearbox. So in this video, I intend to remove the gearbox so that I can deal with that issue, but I've also had a bit of an issue with the clutch lately, which I'm hoping is just the slave cylinder that sits on the bell housing of the gearbox here. Now, about 18 months ago, when we were over in Northern Ireland for the Summit Run and Show, we ended up having to take Esther apart due to a clutch issue, and when we did that, the slave cylinder actually came apart and you know we put it back together and you know it worked fine since then but it also came apart the next time that I took this thing apart to deal with a clutch issue which I think was uh, about a year ago maybe nine months ago so I'm just hoping that that slave cylinder is somehow losing a bit of pressure the symptoms are that usually when you first drive the car after not driving it for ages, the clutch works fine. And then gradually, as you're like sort of further and further into the day, it just starts crunching. But I did notice today when I pulled Esther out of the garage that it was crunching straight away. So whatever the issue is, it's now less of an intermittent fault and it's happening all the time. I have sort of tried to bleed the clutch very quickly um, before we took this thing out last time to go to the North Weald car meet and it didn't really seem to improve things. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that the clutch issue is just the slave cylinder, but I may as well crack on with dealing with the crank sensor and stuff first because that requires me to take the gearbox off and then if there isn't anything else I notice inside the bell housing and still the clutch wrong then um, you know once I've bled the clutch back up if the problem's still there then I can look at changing the slave cylinder so um, yeah hopefully that clutch issue isn't another killed clutch and hopefully it's just to do with the hydraulic side of things but uh, we'll find out but anyway as I say the job for now is to remove the RX-8 six-speed gearbox from this thing which is going to be a mission especially seeing as i'm on my own and i'm laying on the floor you know we don't have luxuries like ramps around here so um yeah i'm just going to dive into this i started inside esther's cockpit by removing her shifter my weak gun then failed to loosen the bolts on the prop shaft but my persuader succeeded once the prop was disconnected from the diff I pulled the front of it out of the gearbox and replaced it with this yoke to keep the oil inside. I disconnected Esther's battery so that I could safely remove her starter motor, which was actually broken. With the wires removed from the starter motor, I could then remove the one remaining bolt to remove it. 
and then I removed the broken piece. After admiring the damage, it was time to start removing some bell housing bolts. This one up here is quite difficult to get to, but a lot easier to remove with this electric ratchet. And this one here is one of two that has an alignment dowel. I used the jack to take the weight of the gearbox, and then I thought it was about time I disconnected the hydraulic line from the slave cylinder. The line screws into an adapter, which then screws into the slave cylinder, and I noticed that when I turned the spanner, the adapter was spinning inside the cylinder as well. Could this be the reason that I was having issues with my clutch, if that fitting wasn't tight enough? Anyway, I used two spanners so that I could keep the adapter in the cylinder whilst removing the line. Then I tried to bung it with a bolt, but it was the wrong thread, so I just put the line into a bottle. And then I pumped the clutch to empty the reservoir. I used two ratchets to remove this bell housing bolt, which has the other alignment dowel on it. And then I decided to remove the gearbox mount completely, before then removing the final bell housing bolt. And then I could pull the gearbox off of the engine and carefully and gracefully lower it to the floor. All right, so that's Esther's Mazda six-speed out. Although I can only take part of the credit. <laughs> Gravity done the last bit of work, as you would have just seen. And yeah, it's much easier disconnecting this line rather than trying to take this slave cylinder off of the box when it's in situ. These bolts are really hard to get to. Yeah, the only downside is you need to bleed the clutch when you put it back together, but that's not a massive deal. Can't believe that the starter motor broke, and I can't believe how far out of the correct position it was. Um, you know, there was a massive gap between here and the bit that had broken off. Now, this is definitely my fault because, lazily, I only used two of the mounting bolts. All right, underneath the car, we've got uh, a bit of oil leaking, and I've got a feeling it's the sump gasket. When I look in between, you know, the flywheel and the sump, there's none on the back of the flywheel. Uh, it's just dripping off the sump. So I do think that's a sump gasket. And to be fair, I remember just after I fitted this sump gasket, uh, it was weeping a little bit and then I remembered that I didn't put any sealer uh, between the block and the gasket around here where you know it's inevitably not dead flat because of the uh, rear cover where it bolts on so it's just a known thing with ZTEX that you put a smear of sealer on the block and I did just have a look in my garage because I thought I had a spare sump gasket and I don't so I may actually just end up lowering the sump down while the gearbox is off and um, yeah, putting a bit of sealer on the block and we'll see if that solves the oil leak. In terms of the crank sensor bracket, if I can get a bit of light in there, you'll see that if I wiggle the crank sensor, I hope that's coming across on the camera, you can see that that little holder is what's moving, which was uh, what I suspected. And I'm not sure if you can see the bolt. Yeah, you should just about see the bolt there. So I may have to take the flywheel off to get to that bolt, I don't know. This flywheel is a light flywheel, so maybe I'll be able to get a tool through one of those holes, because that is a Torx bolt in there. So I can get like an Allen key, or a Torx Allen key, hopefully, through one of the holes in the flywheel to uh, do that bolt back up. But I'll probably take it all the way out, put a bit of Loctite on it, and then do it back up. So I'm gonna remove the clutch now, because I want to inspect that anyway. And uh, yeah, then we'll be able to see if I am gonna be able to tighten that bracket up without removing the flywheel. Can't get to the bolt on that bracket, I'm gonna have to remove the flywheel. I put a bar and socket on the crank pulley bolt and used the jack to hold the bar against the chassis. This prevented the crank turning whilst I cracked off the flywheel bolts and then I used my weak gun to finish the job. I'm pretty confident that that oil leak is indeed the sump and now I can get to that bolt holding that bracket on. A bit of Kent Europe nut lock and that should stop it rattling loose in future. All right, let's have a look at this flywheel and clutch. The flywheel looks absolutely fine. Obviously, it's gonna need a clean, but yeah, no gouges in that. Carlo at AR Valley and Sons Precision Engineers skimmed this for me before, and it won't skim again, because you can see it's just about almost gone through to these dimples here. 
Um, but yeah, that's fine. That'll go again. As for the clutch, definitely showing some wear. Um, yeah, it is showing some wear. Mm, I think in an ideal world, these paddles need to be changed. Last time, um, when I was hearing like a, a rattling noise, it turned out to be this spline that was damaged. And uh, this is a Helix Motorsport paddle clutch and Helix actually offer a service where they replace this middle bit, thankfully. And they did ask me that time if I wanted to change the pucks, but they were absolutely fine. But uh, they are showing wear this time. Hmm, I suppose I should check to see uh, what the state of this spline is. So, that is actually worn again. You can just see that there's uh, quite a bit of play there between the input shaft and the spline on the clutch. I'll just check this on my other Mazda box, just in case it's the input shaft that's worn. But um, judging by how sharp those uh, teeth are on the spline, I do think it is this. I think with these unsprung clutches, they are just prone to wear in the middle there. Um, yeah, just because there's no springs in the clutch to take up, you know, any slack. Uh, the other thing that could cause that is if your gearbox isn't aligned properly with the engine. But, you know, I've actually got a second um, adapter plate, so I'm pretty sure that it's all lined up. You know, it's bolted up with the dowels, etc. So, uh, yeah, let's just try this on the other Mazda box. Yeah, it's loose on there as well. So, yeah, I'm going to have to send this clutch plate back to Helix Motorsport again, get them to change that centre spline, and they may as well put some new pucks on it while they're at it, seeing as they are showing wear. But I think I've actually got another clutch plate in my garage somewhere, uh, an uprated, you know, organic one, and I might actually use that to put Esther back together this time. Hello into a new day, and unfortunately, I was unable to find my spare Pinto clutch friction plate that I thought I had. Esther, of course, runs a Pinto clutch. So that means that this old banger is gonna have to stay off the road until I get her clutch repaired, which is fine, it is what it is. And I was half expecting there to be some sort of issue with Esther's clutch before I started this job, because, uh, she just likes to eat clutches. Anyway, when I finally do put Esther back together, I think I'm actually gonna rebuild her with this gearbox rather than this one, which is the one that I took out yesterday. This was the gearbox that was fitted to Esther when I first did the RX-8 six-speed conversion. And the reason I removed this gearbox and ultimately purchased this RX-8 six-speed is because that first gearbox started crunching in some of the gears. And I just assumed that it was down to the gearbox. Now, when I took the car apart, that time I found that there was an issue with the clutch <laughs> story of my life and realized that the issues I was having with the crunchy gears probably wasn't the gearbox but I decided to put her back together with this second gearbox anyway because then I would have two gearboxes that I've actually tried rather than having one gearbox that works okay and one that was unknown and to be fair if i remember rightly this one definitely makes more noise from what i think is the input shaft you know it sort of whines a bit um and then you press the clutch and it goes away so in theory this gearbox might actually be in better shape than this one but i won't know until i put it back together with this gearbox and ultimately now that esther's got a larger gearbox tunnel the gearbox is a lot easier to remove so if it turns out that this gearbox is indeed no good i can easily just throw this one back in now before i do fit this gearbox i need to cut a little bit more off of it uh, for clearance because I ended up cutting a bit more off of this one than I did off of this one originally. You can see, for instance, around this area, you know, it wasn't cut at all. Whereas this one, I uh, shaved a bit off here. And yeah, there's another couple of areas around this gearbox that I shaved extra off of uh, after learning <laughs> from this gearbox being fitted, uh, which parts of the gearbox were still close to the tunnel. So um, yeah, before I throw this in, I'll replicate all the mods that I did to this one. And uh, yeah, we'll see how good or bad this first RX-8 gearbox that I fitted is. One thing to note, this one does have a hole in the bell housing. <laughs> um, yeah, because when <laughs> this gearbox did start crunching gears and I assumed it was a gearbox, uh, it turned out to be the clutch, as I say. And yeah, basically the clutch disintegrated and some of it exited the bell housing through this hole. But uh, I'm pretty sure that little hole isn't gonna compromise the strength too much. 
Um, so yeah, I reckon it'll be fine. So sad times, Esther won't be going back together in this video, but there is one thing I wanna crack on with before I do end this video, and it's the utter bodge that I mentioned earlier in this video on her sump gasket. I gave the sump a pre-bodge clean with the Kent Europe brake cleaner, and then I set about loosening the sump bolts, but only by a few turns. As I undone the last bolt, disaster. Oil started spilling out the back of the sump because I didn't get round to jacking up the rear of the car to keep it level. Well, I'm an idiot. <laughs> With the car level, I re-loosened the last sump bolt and then cleaned up the oil on the back of the engine. The idea behind my bodge is to put sealer on the four corners of the sump gasket face where it meets this rear cover at the back of the engine and where it meets the oil pump at the front of the engine. To give the bodge the best chance of success, I cleaned up those areas with the brake cleaner and then grabbed the Kent Europe Silly Gasket and with a slight tap on the nozzle, I was able to apply it to the four corners of the engine before then nipping the bolts back up and then torquing them up to 25 newton meters. And then I decided to chuck a load of sealer on the rear of the sump as well. All right, job done. Will that bodge actually work? Who knows, we'll find out when Esther's back on the road. The fact that she's not gonna be on the road for a while, it's probably gonna give the sealer a chance to work more. But um, yeah, I'm not holding my breath, but ultimately it's only cost me a bit of time and a bit of sealer. She's due an oil change, you know, once I do get her back on the road. So, you know, we can have a look then. If it's still leaking, then I'll change the sump gasket as I'm doing that oil change. But yeah, it was quite funny that I forgot to jack the rear end up before starting that job. Uh, and yeah, got a massive puddle of oil underneath Esther now to clear up, but it is what it is. Now I really wanna try and get Esther back on the road by by the 22nd of this month because there's a big event happening at South End. Do let us know in the comments if any of you guys are planning to attend that one. But yeah, she'll just have to wait now until I've got the parts uh, ready to put her back together. But yeah, that is the end of this video. In the next video, I'm gonna be diving back into working on Heidi, my hearing aid beige model Mark II Escort. Actually uh, really excited for the next video, so definitely stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm so close to 20,000 subscribers. So um, yeah, if you're new to the channel, do consider subscribing. But other than that, if you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to check out my website for merchandise and car parts. Massive thanks as always to my patrons for your ongoing support. I'll leave all the links to everything in the description description as usual along with my email address for anyone who wants to contact me but other than that until next time thanks for watching